Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week we're going to look at why chasing dividend yields is not always the best strategy. And then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading, along with answering your most burning questions and looking at stocks for you. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. And remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also remember to tune in to our live Australian Stock Market Show, which is on every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your most burning questions. For many investors, getting a good dividend yield is their main focus when looking to purchase a stock. In some good news for investors, the first quarter of 2022, according to Comsec, saw $36 billion in dividends being paid, and this was higher than the corresponding period in 2021. So is this a good sign as to the health of our stock market? The answer really depends on why the dividends being paid have increased. Now, it could mean that the company is enjoying good growth, and as a result, profits have increased to a point where it makes sense to increase the dividend yield. That said, companies are a little reluctant to increase dividend yields as investors will expect the dividend yield to be maintained, which may not always be possible. So the other reason which may be more likely is that during the past two years of the COVID pandemic, some companies stockpiled cash either to weather the possible storm or use for acquisitions. Now economies are opening up and we are returning to being more normal, albeit a new kind of normal. As such, the excess cash held may not be needed and so companies are just adjusting their cash holdings accordingly. Regardless, it's important for investors to understand that a high dividend yield is never guaranteed. And this is why I always advise to invest for growth first and dividend yield second. Now I say this because a high dividend yield can be a result of a company's share price falling heavily, and investors would be wise to avoid this sort of situation. Far too often, investors are caught catching a falling knife, buying into a stock simply because it has a high dividend yield, only to see the share price continue to fall away. Now, it's not wise chasing a 7% or better dividend yield if you're losing 30% or more of your capital. Now, when faced with this situation, investors resort to the old saying, well, I haven't lost because I haven't sold to validate their poor decision. Now, the better strategy is to buy a rising stock that's paying a good dividend. Now, it's time we looked at the market. So let's start with what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. Well, the best performing sectors last week, well, they included utilities up 5.67%, followed by materials, and that was up 5.53%, and energy up 5.13%. The worst performing sectors included healthcare, which was down 2.53%, followed by industrials down 1.17% and communication services, that was down 0.89%. The best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included Pilbara Minerals, that was up 14.64%, followed by IGU up 13.81%, and JB Hi-Fi, that was up 11.96% last week. The worst performing stocks included Fisher & Paykel, that was down 11.58%, followed by Magellan Financial Group, that was down 9.78%, and ResMed, that was down 9.77% last week. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. Well, for the second week in a row, our Australian stock market had a beautiful, strong upward week, breaking previous highs that I was really waiting for it to do to confirm that the down move is over. And right now, I'm pretty confident that's happening. And we are now, um, com or I actually am confident to say that the downward move has stopped and that we're likely to be in the next uh, medium, or at least short term, but to more towards a medium term uptrend over the next you know three to six months or even longer than that i think we're going to be bullish pretty much most of the year but let's go and have a look at the charts to see exactly what we're seeing here on the charts now as you can see there on the left is a monthly chart on the right is a weekly chart and have a look at the monthly bar there it's just a, a massive massive bar there on that last bar on the right you can see it's beautiful where it's just trending up nicely if i open up the chart here you can see that this close here so far in march at seven six eight nine is if i go right back 
you can see that close there. There was only in that whole period right across through to June last year, if I put it right on the close, you can only see one, two closes above that line. That's why I'm getting really, really excited. So since June last year, and we, we're remembering we're right near the end of March, so we're about nine months, the All Law News Index has only closed on a monthly basis above that current level twice. So this is a significant point to me to say, look, this market is likely to move stronger, it's likely to move up, and it'll likely move through that previous all-time high there at 7956.3 points. So I'm, I'm really confident our market will move through 8,000 points over the coming weeks and or months, probably up to around 8284 before we get our next peak. But I am mindful, though, that, um, you know, the, you get all these bears out here and they're saying, you know, the market's crashing, the market's crashing, which we've heard for months and months and months. And, you know, during this period through here, so many people are, are telling me right through here going, the market's crashing. How can you not say it's, it's crashing? Well, it's not. Our market was down 11.62%. That's definitely not a crash. A crash is 20% or better. I like to, I mean, it, it depends on who you talk to too. Some people say 20% is a crash. I'm more likely 25% is a crash, but even 20%, it did not crash. Certainly there were stocks that fell away, like premium was over down over 50%. There was a few other tech stocks in Australia that were down over 50%. There were tech stocks in the US down over 50%. The NASDAQ crashed but the not the not the S&P 500. If I look at the US market, the S&P 500 and the Dow, so far they haven't technically crashed at all. So at this point in time, and that's part of my job, I cop a lot of crap from people who are, uh, the only word I can use is ignorant to how the market unfolds. And I do cop a lot of crap from people saying you're wrong, you know, the market's crashing, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, as an analyst, you have to really, look at what you know and what the charts are telling you, not what emotions are doing. Uh, and that's a real, real strong point that I have to get out to you today. And we'll go back to the charts in a second and I'll just show you what I'm thinking of for the next few weeks. But all too often people get in your ear or try and get in your head with, you know, posting stuff. Uh, like for me, it's for people posting stuff on YouTube or, you know, Facebook, all those sorts of things saying, hey, you're wrong on this, blah, blah, blah. But you're never going to be 100% right. Nobody is, nobody ever is. And if some analyst ever says that they're 100% right, they're a liar because nobody is. You can't predict the market. All I know is, all I can do as an analyst is predict what I think the market's going to do, do my analysis based on what I'm actually seeing on the charts, not what I'm hearing around everywhere, and then make a decision based on probability of what might happen. That's all I can do. Now, the only decision I can make is to get into the market or get out of the market. That's two decisions that I can make. Stay in or get out basically, or get in, or not get in. So that's really all I can do. And the market will control itself. It runs how it wants to do it. And all I need to do as the analyst is actually look at it and go, okay, is it more bullish? Is it more bearish? Is there more indecision? Is there more volatility in the market? All of my tools, which I don't show on my charts here because I really do want to keep it really, really simple. So some people say, Dar, you don't do much on the charts. You're really high level. I am high level specifically because most of the people watching this channel are newer or more inexperienced people, more inexperienced traders from my research and asking questions and, and seeing the questions that you pose. So right now at the moment, the market is a lot safer to me. So risk of the downward move has really, really dropped to being very, very low. And I think the move up is that the, we've, we've seen over the last couple of weeks is a strong sign that our market will rise up through that 8,000 points to 8,200, 8,400. But let's go and have another quick look at the weekly chart. I'm gonna bring this up and just show you um, because as I said, this high close, and it's a high sort of close, you can see we've only had a couple of closes above that level over the last eight months, as you saw, but you can see this huge big sideways pattern. Even our all time high here, which was back in January, open down here, pushed up and closed right down in this mess. So getting through this sort of level through here, if I can say, this is probably the last little hurdle. This sort of getting through this sort of level 7,800 odd points is the last little hurdle on our market to really getting blue sky above it. And I think it'll do that. Beautiful, strong move over the last couple of weeks. Last two weeks ago, we had a 231 point move. Last week, we had 155.6 point move. So I think it's quite strong now. We've broken through all these sort of constraints here. And as I said, I think our market will do very, very nicely move through that sort of 7,900, get up to 8.2, probably 8.4 over the next three to six months. And I think it'll do very, very well before the end of the year. So am I worried about a crash now? No, I have zero worries about our market crashing at all. Now, well, now I've seen the last two weeks. 
but only history will tell us. You know, anybody can make decisions in hindsight and be an absolute guru and get it right 100% of times, but very few people get it right most of the time uh, before things actually happen. And uh, often people say to me, hey, you got that wrong because of this, this. That was my best decision at the time based on what I was seeing. And, and we're not going to, as I said, we're not always going to be right. But at this point in time, I think the market is quite safe. I think there's some great stocks. I think you're going to need to be more picky with stocks. Just Blanketly buying sort of anything across the market I don't think will work. I think there's still a lot of things we need to sort out with our economy and a whole range of different things around that. You know, CPI, um, you know, obviously supply chain issues. There's a whole range of things. Inflation, interest rates are all going to affect our economy. So I think we're still going to need to be a little bit more selective in our stocks. Um, but I do like, like I talked about last week, I do like the technology sector. I think there's some really good opportunities in there. But please don't just jump in early. Make sure you're looking at a stock for what's going on. Not what people in your ear are telling you because people in your ear are not you. You need to be satisfied with what you're doing and how you're investing, and when you, whether you're buying and selling and how you're managing the trades. But that's it for me for this week on our Marker app. Now let's get into the questions that you have for me. Now, the first question we have today is from Spring Spring, who says, Hi, Dale, pondering on SCG for a medium to long term hold price is currently at a base of around upward channel. Um, if this holds, this might suggest movement again towards the higher level of said channel. Any thoughts? Interesting. Nobody's asked me asked me about channels on this this show. For I can't remember anybody ever asking me about channels on the show. But let's have a look at it. And really, I think what you're talking about here, and I'll draw it up here. I'm not a look. I'm really uh, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of channels. I really not because you know ch they st stocks price will resonate in a channel until it doesn't. And when is it? It's not going to. And I think what you're sort of looking at is roughly something like this. There's this this sort of challenge, and you're saying or challen, channel, sorry if I can say that properly, that price is resonating between these sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it's I just find them a lot more hit and miss. You know, the, the theory for those people who have never seen channels is, you know, when it's down the bottom, you buy, and when it's up the top, you sell. When it's down the bottom, you buy, and when it's up the top, you sell. But so often with channels, it, they break out. So if you've got a stock that's moving up nicely, this is really short-term stuff. You know, and if you've had this sort of big, big bar on a monthly basis and it's you've made a lot of money, and let's say you've bought down here, right down here, down at two dollars and twelve, and right up here it's at two dollars and eighty. So we're talking about what's that, sixty-eight cents on a two dollar stock. So that's a pretty good rise through there if I look at that. Are you gonna be more inclined to hold on to this stock and saying, well, there's thirty-two percent rise? Are you gonna be sitting there going, I'm gonna sell that now? And the answer is probably not, it's the emotional. Um, type of decisions, but you're probably not. But in theory, what you're saying is it should move up to this top end of the channel, but eventually it'll break out. I generally do this. I just take that off. Because to me, I rather, to me, the whole premises of buying and selling or trading a stock market is to trade a trend. So you get in at the earliest possible sign of a change in trend and you get out at the earliest possible sign in the change in trend. So obviously changing trend is down to up and or up to down. Now, this is just beautiful. But what channels tend to do, depending on how tight you have them, you get in and out of the stock where sometimes it's actually you make a lot more money if you don't do that. And that's where people need to look at it, not just take theories um, out of context, if that makes sense. And if you look at this sort of channel through here, it's, it's really more sideways and more sideways through here. But I do like this stock. I think it's a great looking stock at the moment. Um, if I put my little trend line tool on here, this is not a trend line, I'm, it's the tool I'm using. But you can see here the momentum really is tough. If you're looking for medium long term, just stay with that line. Basically, you don't need the one on the top of it. So if it's you know if you're doing short-term trading, then channels have more value, but not in medium to long term. I would just throw that top line out of it, and as long as it's staying above this grey line through here, I'd stay with that stock. It does look good if you are in it at the moment. I think you said you are were in it for memory on the the email, but I do like this stock. I think it's a great pick right now. It's trending up nicely, but eventually. Um, it'll peak, like I was saying, and uh, eventually then it will go down. But thank you very much for your question. Um, now we've got a, a question from one of our regulars, John, who calls himself Glasgow Celtic Boy, who says, 
Hi, Dale. Today I purchased some shares in Goodman Group at $22.70 as a medium term hold. My reasoning was that on the monthly chart, it has higher highs and higher lows, though the weekly chart does seem to have more of that zigzag pattern like on today's show for Blue Scope. Now I could draw a trend line under the monthly chart and it seems to be bouncing along it nicely. Finally, the stock as a whole seems to be in a very long term bullish trend. Do you find my decision making is sound with this stock? Many thanks as always for your help. Thanks, John, or cheese, John. Let's go and have a look at the stock for you, John. Um, Goodman Group. I actually like Goodman Group. I think it's a nice stock. I think you've done a really, really good job in picking this. You can see there on the monthly chart, it's it's just a, some amazing trending stock. If you go right back, look at that. Since back in 2009, it's just slowly getting more and more and more and more. And if I use my little trend line tool, you can see the change in momentum. If I could put that on the right point. Go back over there, Dale. There we go. You can see how it's slowly gathering momentum through here with these grey lines are slowly increasing. I think this thing has got more to go, a little bit more to go. I think there's your momentum there. So it's slowly speeding up and speeding up again. I think it's looking really good. I think there's a high chance it will continue to grow up. I'm not sure why you bought it because, um, I mean, obviously you said there's higher troughs, but it is in, an, in a long-term uptrend. I will confirm that for you, John. It's also in a medium term uptrend but you bought it too early like there's one two week months down and obviously this month down and you bought it here but really you're buying on a downward move these are all downward bars so I never buy when when price moves up um, if that makes sense so once the downward moves op over and you get in and you move up so it's a little bit high risk because what's to say John it wasn't going to have another fourth month down or a fifth month down or have a bigger move down uh, and you don't know that now Goodman Group is a good stock but look at this February 2007 to March 2009. And if I put one of my little tools on here, where is it? Um, that one. You can see that it fell. That's 90%. So it fell over 90% of its price in that time. So it can fall heavily if you get it wrong. Now, I'm not saying it's not a super volatile stock. But what I'm saying is, is you don't ever buy things that are going down. Now, whilst, I, as I said, I... I 100% know it's in a long-term uptrend because it hasn't made lower peaks and lower troughs. So I know that for a fact, but short-term move is down. So always wait for it to be a little bit more bullish on the short term. All you've seen is this big strong week up through here um, and you've bought into it. So again, a little bit too early on uh, your entry, mate. It uh, really is a little bit too early on your entry. I do like the stock. If you're looking medium to longer term, I don't think you're going to have too much trouble with it. But again, I just think it's a little bit too early on entry. I think you need to um, have a little bit better rules on your entry point, but make sure you stick with some exit rules. Make sure you've got a stop loss on it and you should do well. Now we've got a question from Cooper who's this, who says, thanks for the Monday report. Dale, if you could possibly do one day, do analysis on the stock called Lake Resources. Its ticket code is LKE. It is a clean lithium mining company. I was put onto it by my brother and bought in at 85 cents, and now it's roughly $1.60, so I'm in profit, but would still like your opinion. The goal is to hold for at least 2024, which is when the company is looking to be able to actually produce profits. A um, couple of things there is, is look, yeah, obviously you need to thank your brother, but it's, to me, you need to have solid rules around everything. And I know people might get sick of me saying you need rules around things you do. Um, so obviously you bought in, you've made some money. Maybe your, your brother's saying, you know, hey, you can flick me a few dollars because now you've pretty much doubled your money. But saying you want to hold it till 2024, I would never put that into my, my investment strategy. The whole strategy when you're investing or trading is to buy low, sell high. That's it. No time frame around that. It's buy low, sell high. And you know, in 2024, when it starts to make a profit, does that mean it's going to start rising? No, it doesn't. So you know, so you might want to hold it to at least 2024. But what if it falls away before now and then? If What if it falls away in the next 12 months? So you really do need to have rules around to protecting profit and also protecting capital. So let's go and have a look at the chart anyway. And I'll bring that up. It's Lake Resources. And I'm not discounting your opinion in terms of that. And I'm saying it's a great looking stock because you bought it in around 80 cents. Now you've had this beautiful big run up this month. Now you've seen here one, two, 
big month up. There's one, two, three, four weeks up. I wouldn't be surprised if they get some weakness through here over the next few weeks and it comes right back down. You know, might become down to 150 or even to 130 because you've seen it really, really rocket off. Uh, let me put some volume quickly on this. You can see a lot, a lot of volume coming through on the week of the 18th of March, uh, which is probably this week. No, this week. So you can see there, and then a lot more people came in after that. So for whatever reason it's taken off, you've seen a lot of volume coming through. So what I would suspect is there'd be people taking some profits and getting out of this stock. So a little bit of weakness. It has a little bit of weakness at the end of last week there, but don't be surprised if it doesn't come back. Right now it is quite bullish. Um, whether it's going to maintain its bullishness, I mean, have a look at this sort of stock. It does fall quite heavily when it does. You have these big moves up and then it falls heavily. So um, just make sure you're protecting the downside risk. That's really all I can say to it at the moment. Right now, I think you've had a great stock. You've picked it really, really well. But just because your brother gave you a good one doesn't mean he's going to be able to do that again. And you really do need to understand buying and selling yourself and having rules around that. So as I said, all I would do is put a stop loss underneath or have an exit strategy or trailing stop loss underneath what I'm doing to protect my my capital that I've got into firstly but more importantly right now is you protect that great profit that you've made so make sure you've got a line in the sand to say if it falls below this level I'm going to exit so but thank you very much for your question now we've got a question from Ramon who says hi Dale again an excellent program would you mind having a look at G sorry JLG I bought in recently at $5.88 in early September do you have any views on its share price in terms of short and medium term direction. I like the company and wouldn't have an issue with more of a long term hold, but have seen some weakness and indecision on the charts. Cheers. So let's go and have a look at that. I'll bring that up right now. So I'm going to tell you something. This John's Ling Groot is one of Janine's favorite stocks at the moment. So you've done really, 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 really well. So at this point in time, look at it. It's just a beautiful stock. So having Janine like it is, is a bonus, but look at the trend. It's just magic. This is a, such a nice stock. So all I can say is this is looking really, really nice um, through for John's Ling Group. So sorry about that, guys. I clicked on the tab rather than go back to the weekly chart. Looking really, really strong. I like it. I should break through that. 925 in the not too distant future but it doesn't get much better than this people if you want to put this into your portfolio for a, for a good medium to longer term trade i think you can't um, do much better than this at the moment i've got no issues with this for a long-term hold at this point in time as i said janine likes it i like it i think you've had a really really good pick on this dog like i said everybody just make you protect make sure you protect your downside but thank you for sending in your question now we've got a question from another regular King Kashuma who says, Hi Dale, I bought some Wally shares in February at $12 and it looks to have broken the downtrend line on both the monthly and weekly charts that has been in place from 2018. I'm hoping it will continue its upward trajectory. It would be great to hear your thoughts as always. So let's have a look at those for King Kashuma. So I'll bring up Wally. <sighs> look. I, look, I don't have an issue that it is trending up, mate. I really don't, but I don't necessarily think trend lines, mm, I don't necessarily agree with you on your trend lines. Um, there's no uptrend line on this on the monthly chart at the moment. There's no uh, downtrend line on it for me to have bought, but I do like it. One, two, three, it's nearly four months straight up. It's looking good. It's broken through all this sort of sideways stuff. I do like it. So I'm not saying it's not a good, a good stock for you to hold. Um, I think, as I was saying just before, if it went, it's now it's starting to move through this sort of thirteen or dollar area. I think it's looking pretty good. Once it gets through that, you'll have some pretty much some blue sky weekly. I can, I can confirm there is a trend line up underneath it on a weekly basis, so that's pretty good. But I'd like to see it get through this to really get some blue sky. So fourteen dollars and one, because you can see there, it's that's sort of a major level of resistance there. So would I buy into it right now? Probably not. If I'm already in it, I'd be staying with it. But I do like your um your thinking there um and thanks for thanks for your email and thank you to everyone um for sending in your questions and unfortunately you know i can't answer everything that everybody's putting up on the youtube i mean you know, there's so many comments that go up onto youtube in all our different videos so if you've ever posed a question on a video just to let you know with these monday market reports the questions i do answer are always the ones that were put on the last month last week's 
report. So all the questions I've just answered were on Monday's report last week. So if you put in questions on other ones, I don't even go looking at them because it's just so time consuming to go and look around on YouTube and to find everybody's questions. And you know, as you can appreciate, I have other things that I need to do. Um, so I only just look for the ones that were on that last week's report. But remember to get for the best chance for you to have your emails answered or your questions answered is really to publicly subscribe to our channel, which means there's a little red thing next to your name. And I know you're a, a, a strong supporter of the channel and that you do really appreciate what we're actually doing. So do that publicly subscribe and then put your questions below in the comment section of this video and we'll get to them next week. Now remember that here on this channel we do these Monday Mark Reports each and every week. We also do our live stream every Tuesday night 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Sorry, make sure you get online tomorrow night 7 to 8 p.m. If you do want to ask Janine and I a question, you can pick up the phone and ring us. The, the number you need to dial to, to do that tomorrow night is 92909 And also remember to hit the subscribe button right now. Also, click the bell on the right of it so you know when we go live with our show tomorrow night and upload other videos. Give us a big thumbs up. That's it for me. I'm Dale Gillam, Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within Goodbye. Good luck and good trading.